Hello and welcome to Flory Models Kit View Time. Today we've got ICN's latest release. This is the 148 scale uh, B26-50 Invader. Now I know what you're thinking. Why didn't they just do the World War II one or any of the other ones that are available from this one? But let's face it, manufacturers these days tend to always hit us with something where yeah, it's great, but not quite the version we want. I don't know why, it just seems to be something that seems to be the norm these days. But anyway, it's still a great aircraft um, and obviously has been flying until very recently as a uh, water bomber as well in the uh, fire department. Anyway, down in front we can see a nice little bit of box art. Uh, not quite, I don't know, there's, it's something that's like it's digital put on or something else like that, but still very uh, nice, needless to say. A little bit about the actual Invader right the way down in there. So uh, basically from 19, where are we? Uh, has it got a, the actual dates on this one? Korean War from 50 to 53. And obviously uh, from 48 to 46 with the glass nose. Okay, and then we've got some more details around here about it as well. So 46 pounds available from the PM store. We do have them in stock. So your kit number is 48281. And then some of the markings, you can see them as well. All right, very nice. And again, that's probably there. And then once they've been worn in and weathered in, they do look really nice, don't they? You can see them just like that. So looking in the box, still sealed. So we're just try and get in here and then one around the back here so i think we're gonna get no more seals properly lots of sticky pads okay one to each side as well try that again okay so if we can get in a bit of a tight box i just going to do it to me every time so you sort of get an outer shell with this one and then you get the, the inner box and there we go we are greeted by typical icm really nice plastic as we can see unfortunately it is in one giant bag right the way through so you can see very nice indeed and we've got decals just down and in instructions here I am hoping we've got decals inside, we do. So I was just wondering why this was like this. Oh, that's blue. Okay, so starting obviously with the instructions as always, as you can see. So we've got a little bit of technical data, color call outs using Rebel and Tamiya. Uh, obviously you've got your normal colors down in there as normal. Sprue call outs right the way through. Okay, on that one, and then working your way through, okay. Both types of canopy in here, so there we go. That's the difference between the uh, older and the newer versions. So obviously we do get them in the box anyway. Okay, so starting off uh, into the actual cockpit, nicely detailed cockpit by the looks of it, as we can see various components making the way right the way through. We've got a little bit of wing spar as well, making wing alignment so much easier, right the way in there and all the equipment going in. Bomb bay, uh, and obviously the bomb racks are being fitted down in like that. Okay, looks like we've got some good detail on the inside that we'll be able to see. So we've got those bomb racks being fitted in there and then obviously the communications and the sort of uh, flight controls, various things being footed in. Bulkheads going right the way through. Again, nice twin spar system as well for easy wing lineup. Looks like we've got a one piece uh, bomb base, uh, sorry, uh, nose wheel bay and gear in one. Uh, so we'll have to have a look at that in a moment. Okay, then we've got the cockpit being fitted down into there. And again, nice detail right the way through. A couple of holes to open up and then fitting the bombs and the racks onto the actual side with the other one. Looks very good. Again, it is definitely going to be a one piece, no system on that one being fitted through. And then obviously bringing both halves together. Tailplane's being fitted down on there. Rudder is separate as well, so that's quite nice as well. And then obviously we've got the nose system calling out as we would expect for a 40 gram nose weight to be fitted down there as well. So that's all being fitted onto the front. Okay, opening up the various holes, there's various different options going to be down in here from obviously World War II right the way through to the very late versions of them as well being fitted down into there. Wings going together, being fitted in. Again, nice to see we've got separate control uh, surfaces right the way through as well. So you can pose those pretty much in anything you like. All right, guns being fitted down onto the wings. Wings going onto those wing spars should be quite straightforward. Engine nacelle system going right the way through as we would expect two halves and the various details. It looks like all the interior wheel wells and doors are all molded in one, okay? Engines being fitted onto the front. We don't get any detail on the actual engines themselves. 
but the engine cells being fitted and then guns being fitted for the top turret and then obviously the bottom turret type systems so it's still the top turret onto this one being fitted down onto there and then we've got this one as well for a sighting system it looks like being fitted on glasswork being fitted on the top okay and then belly turret that's the one we're on about being fitted down underneath there as well gear being fitted through looks quite good no problems at least it can go in afterwards even if you can't close up the doors okay we do get engine detail very nice full detailed engines right the way through i thought icm wouldn't let me down okay so those all being fitted down and obviously mounted up on the front engine cowlings going onto there and then cow flaps i presume you could probably do those open or closed okay bomb bays depending if you're going to have that open or shut as well being fitted down onto that a few little aerials being fitted down onto those and then obviously we've got bombs or guns or whatever you're going to have really your options or fuel tanks onto the actual wing pylons props being fitted onto the front and then that completes your build looking very nice indeed some nice options so we've got one there with a natural metal finish uh, down in there which is uh in uh spring 1951 in japan and then we've got these other ones down in here from 1950 in the more olive drab or a bit of a mixture uh, and various ones on there and again that looks really nice in that natural metal finish as well and seeing as i'm just doing a natural metal finish aircraft i'm quite taken with that okay so decals a bit garish on the blue isn't it but anyway no real problems on there and if we have a, a slightly if we do it the right way that might help there we go again maybe a little bit thick it's a little bit interesting how with the blue i don't know if you can see this but it's actually got the stars and bars the blue here the inner part is i would say satin to flat but the outer is in the darker i'm assuming it should be like that and it's not just the way they printed it but again it's a little bit different and then obviously the us air force ones big old chunky carrier filming amongst all of that okay but there we go and again these are done like it's well i'm assuming it's just the way that they're actually printed and then we've actually got the markings down on there and again you can see a little bit of carrier film a little bit chunky shall we say that's the only trouble with those ones all right but generally not too bad at all okay so into the bag okay this is crammed in here well a couple of bits are already off the screw, so we've got one giant bag, um, we've got various bits, and this is the trouble, I don't make this stuff up when I say about separate bags, that way it just stops screws rubbing together as much, it's all very well cramming them in, but if they're going to come off, they are going to come off, so we've got various ones down in here, and we've got various parts that have come off of, and this is the trouble, you can see they're locked together, so I'm just a little bit being careful how to get this apart because it's physically locked if you can see it down in here this is the problem there we go okay and again we've got this is as you can see it's not good icm we want separate bags it looks like none of these are a mass problem at least the clear parts look like survived the trip okay so there we go now the plastic itself feels extremely soft and there we go. So we've got various parts that have come off here. So we're going to keep those very safe indeed in the engine cowlings. Okay, so, so you've got it here. First impression, it feels really, really soft. It's a good quality, high quality plastic. Um, there's a small amount of texture, which actually I quite like. I don't like it being overly polished. You look at Hasegawa's, that's a beautifully polished system. Trouble is though, paint needs to stick to it. Uh, so sometimes it can be a little bit slippy and it's easy. It's got a tiny bit of micro texture. I just think it helps the primer adhere and then obviously subsequent paint colors. And if you're doing lots of weathering, the last thing you want to do is it peeling off down to plastic, okay? So as you can see, pretty nice details on all that right the way through just looking um just as i say this is one of those things it's very difficult to it looks like a sink mark but actually i don't think it is so if you notice on the back here you've got this type of texture this is because we've actually got detail really nice detail to be honest on the insides of these bays but i'm just making sure that's not going to come through i don't think it has so the engine the cells you can see they're on there there's no riveting detail which is a shame uh, and I think it would really make it if it had it, uh, but definitely some very nice 
skin details. We've got all the actual panels. That actually looks quite nice on the top of that wing. The underside's got a little bit more going on under Heath here with access panels and various things. You can probably see this glint in. This is release agent, so it's probably worth giving this a quick wipe over before you come near it with any type of paint. Okay, so you can either wash the sprues first or perhaps just, you know, give it a wipe over the gloss. But this has definitely got a release film. Normally it's a sign it's one of the early ones out of the mold. Okay, generally no problem at all. As you can see, the eject pins all seem to be out of the way, okay, and not interfering with anything. Good detail, strong details, as you say, on the inside, and there's all your holes you need to open up, whichever different variants you're doing uh, on this particular one. Again, it's quite a long-lived aircraft, so there's plenty of stuff out there. But Spruce uh, C there, looking very nice. Okay, over on the other one, as you can see, we've got basically a similar type of layout uh, for the uh, top and bottoms of the wings, but this time we've actually got the control surfaces down in here as well. And straight away, you look at it, we've got some nice texture and you can feel it uh, down in here on the actual uh, control surfaces, on the rudder and on the sort of uh, tailplanes. No problem with those at all. So we've actually got the, I think that's the top turret. And then the bulkhead, we can see we've got some wiring looms, things like that running arms. Got a nice amount of detail on these as well. So that's very nice. And on these up here, and there's those little wing spars coming off of it. Bombay, if you're going to have close, obviously there's no detail on that. And then down on here, you do have some ejector pins in this, but you're not going to see those areas. The other ones, as you can see down in here, there is no ejector pins on anything that's in a scene area. So that's actually quite a nice uh, options on those. Okay, let's have a look for the the body. Okay, so down here on the actual uh, body itself, as you can see, it's pretty modular because of the front end. You can see here the big old bit of fluff. We'll just get rid of that. But again, it's a shame it hasn't got some more sort of surface detail as in riveting and stuff like that. But you can see it's all here for the basics of. And then you can just add a little bit in there. There is some for the bigger areas around the wing areas and some of the control uh, and access panels. Okay, and again, it's funny because it looks like stressed skin. It's not, it's molding coming through, but there is a little bit of sinkage on this, but luckily I think you could get away with this of actually saying that it is stressed skin um, because it's actually working with this framework. And to be honest, this is really nice detail on the inside there. So actually quite happy with that. All right. And then generally we've got down in here, cockpit floor, but yeah, I think generally that's all really nice indeed. Okay, getting into the nitty gritty bits. So down in here, we've actually got the uh, 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 the main engines and the props. And I'm looking around. There's no real flash on this, which is really nice. Um, tiny little sink marks here, there and everywhere. But to be honest, they are very, very small. But now you're into the, the nitty gritty of it. You can probably see some of those details. Very nice with the bomb bays and cow flaps and all these different bits down in there. Some really nice... Uh, details on these engines on the pots as well with this sort of cooling vanes onto them that'll take a wash nicely and then we've got the turrets we've got the props you've actually got the exhausts uh, and various other areas down on these all right so yeah actually some really nice detail we've seen it before with a lot of their stuff that's going to be a match pair okay and then lastly over here again we've got bits hanging off all over this okay so we've seen it, as I say before, on a lot of their kits that have been coming out. So like the uh, JU-88, the HE-111s, all the ICM stuff, they've all got those nice bits you want. So a little bit of engine detail. You're not paying a right over the top price for that detail. So if you don't want it, you can just cover it up and it's not really gonna break the bank. But it's a nice option and it's there, okay? So down in here, this is what we were talking about. These are these wheel wells. Um, and obviously having the side, so they are going to be fixed open, which is going to be a little bit of a pain for painting. Generally, though, there is some nice detail. There's no ejector pins in those, so that's all right. But you can see you've got the nose one over here, and obviously you've got the main ones here. So, yeah, I think really it's a good trade-off. I'd prefer to have them as a separate, but um, it's pretty much there. So, working our way around, you've got the gear, again, looking all very nice indeed. And then obviously we've got the ailerons there, got the control yoke, we've got the nose sections, all the different things, we've got the top of the nose and the bottom of the nose, the turrets, you've got the fuel tanks there, if you want the teardrop tanks. And then obviously we've got some of the other areas for inside the cockpit. And then working our way around over here, some more of the parts. I think this is actually the bomb site uh, over here. Okay, and uh, working our way back up onto those. So again, yeah, I think it's all in all 
the level of detail is just about there. You could get away with it really nicely, but if you wanted to, and this is the thing with this kit, a little bit of wiring around those engines, a little bit of wiring around the bomb bay and the actual um, the gear base, things like that, a uh, little bit of riveting, and you could really extend this model and turn it into something very, very nice. Okay, so down in here, we've actually got the engine cows. Okay, so um, yeah. Not bad, one piece, saves having a seam line, and I can't actually see a seam line in it, which is even better. So actually that's very nicely slip molded. Okay, wheels, halves, separate hubs. Yeah, you either love it or you hate it. Okay, so that's those. These little parts, I have no idea. I think these are the cow flaps here, uh, around the cowling. All right, and then last up, we have the clear parts. So we've got two types of clears in there, so it looks like you can do the different versions so and I'm just trying to see what the difference really is so yeah it literally is just this bar across the top it looks like is your difference with this one but there we go so that's all your your clear parts and as you can see you've got a little bit of wobble in there but that's actually a really complex way of doing it it's fine if you're going to go straight on flush sideways but on the curves you are going to get a little bit of ripple you can see it down here on this little guy here, but that is really complex. And the thing is, if you put your finger in behind it, and you can see there is no real problems with that. It's just over long distances. So actually clear parts, no problem at all. No seam lines you need to remove or anything else like that. There's no flash on them. Very nice indeed. And there you go. I have to say, over the last two years now, You've seen me build a few ICM bits and pieces and you know they fast became one of my sort of go-to uh, manufacturers. They have come up leaps and bounds. And if you're into, you know, sort of your light medium bombers as well, ICM, their German stuff is absolutely legendary now. It's really nice stuff, good level of detail at the right price. And that's the nice thing with their stuff as well. It gives you just everything you need. And then if you want to go that little bit further, like wiring it up, re-riveting, adding a few bits and pieces, it's very straightforward to do that and it's a nice easy jump point to do it. It's not like some kits where it's a mile away. This one is pretty much there, then you can add it. And the nice thing is at 46 quid, it's not gonna break the bank at the end of the day. You can then just do a little bit scratch building and have something really, really nice without having to jump down the aftermarket route and getting engines, cockpits, wheel wells, wheels and all those things, which are actually gonna break the bank quite a bit on these things and push them right up into the 100 pounds. So anyway, that is the 148 scale B26 Invader. I'd have to say it's an absolute must. Thank you.